Well, good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church. We're so happy to have you here this morning. And our call to worship comes from Psalm 95. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations for his marvelous deeds among the peoples. So will you stand as we declare the goodness of God this morning? Shit. I will worship with all of 
first ones we sang together when we were back together as a church family physically a couple years ago and we taught the kids the actions so I can see you and you can see me so we can do the actions together so along with the chorus follow my hands Jamie I think you know the actions no just follow me and we will do the actions together kids okay grown-ups you can do them too let's practice with the chorus we're gonna go first with praise the Lord his mercy is more praise the Lord his mercy is more Stronger than darkness New every morn Our sins they are many His mercy is more Good job
one more time before we sit down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. He's stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Amen. You can be seated. Well, good morning, church family. It's amazing to be in the house of the Lord, worshiping together. And so we're glad that you've all come with us this morning. So I'm going to ask Ashley and Leslie. Er, did I get that right? Thank you. I can't even write my own reading. Uh, anyway, uh, they're going to come forward with an announcement. Now, parents, don't freak out. Okay, I forgot the kids one Sunday. And... Uh, with grace, we move on and we learn from our mistakes. That we're going to do an announcement because these are Sunday school teachers, and then we'll do the kids, and then we'll go back to the announcements. Okay, so hang with us this morning. What have you got for us this morning, ladies? Happy Mother's Day, Leslie. Yeah, happy Mother's Day. What are you doing today? Um, I think we're going for lunch. Awesome. Today? Yeah, yeah. Getting yeah. some baking and some flowers maybe yes. too for your family. Yeah. yeah for you. Lord, are you ready for Mother's Day? For what? For lunch? <laughs> yeah. I'm always ready for lunch. <laughs> Well, we have a whole bunch of baking and some flowers that you could purchase for Kara. I could? You could. But she's not my mother. No, but you should celebrate the one who became you a dad. Or, like, yeah, you I know? do. I, I try to do that. My you wife is so Kara. beautiful and talented and yeah. intelligent. I try to honor her on Mother's forget. Day. Good idea. Right? Did I get some brownie yeah. points, honey? Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a little sale going on, um, and there's an opportunity to sign up for baking. Um, Leslie will tell you where that is. But we're fundraising for a bigger mixer for the kitchen, which would help me a lot to provide baking, more baking for you guys, and so I'm not doing it all by hand, because um, baking for 300 people is kind of a task sometimes when I'm doing it by hand. Um, also, it helps with many more other things um, as well. So we're doing some fundraisers. Leslie's leading it, and our first one is for Mother's Day. So men, this is a forewarning. There's three weeks away. You need to bring cash, but Les will um, tell us more about the sale. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah, I'm Leslie. So if you are loving baking, please sign up. We have a sign-up sheet in the lobby and one by the back door, I guess it is. And yes, we, hi, Emma. <laughs> She's like, hi, hi, mommy. We need bakers, so if you love to bake, please sign up. Um, the pencil's a little hard to write with, um, so yeah, you can always contact me, Leslie Ripley, um, if, you, if you love to bake. If you love to eat baking, then please remember to bring cash on Mother's Day. Um, it doesn't have to be for um, your mom. It can just be for you if you want to have some cookies to eat with your coffee that, that Sunday, so, um, or you want some fresh flowers. I know that's going to be available as well. Kim's making those up, so yeah. Yeah, and remember to bring cash. That's yes. the biggest part. Yeah. Okay? We'll keep reminding you guys every week until Mother's yeah. Day. Anyways. And if you forget, Thanks. it's your yeah. fault. <laughs> All right, thank you, ladies. Well, I'm glad that it's not a, a bake thing. You know, you have to go and, and do your own baking course. Because the last time I tried to bake something, I was looking at 25 to life with no chance for parole if anybody ate it. <laughs> so... Wow, so they're going to get other people to bake stuff too. That's, that's awesome. All right, I'm going to call the kids forward at this time. If you want to come and sit on the, uh, the seats. Good morning. What a privilege it is to <clears throat> come, <clears throat> come before you and to lead you in prayer this morning. I just want to say a brief note before I start praying is that we will have an offering starting this Sunday, immediately following uh, and during the, uh, my prayer and then during the song that uh, will, uh, will follow. And we'll be doing that uh, every Sunday, starting again, having a, a time to give here directly. First, let us seek our God with, with David when he was in the desert 
thirsty for God. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. This is found in Psalm 63. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In dry and parched land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and your glory. Because you, your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for, for the infinite love that uh, sent your Son, Jesus Christ, who showed us how we should live and then died on that terrible cross to pay the price for our sins. Thank you also for sending the Holy Spirit who comes into our lives when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for Pastor Wayne and ask that you would continue his healing now that he is finished with the leg support. Please bless um, Peter Sinclair, Director of Loaves and Fishes, as he brings the message to us this morning. We thank you for the worship team today and for the, the opportunity and joy we have to worship you in music. We pray for our teachers working with our children, and we really thank you for the many children we, we saw here on the steps this morning. Bless these little ones, and may each one of them come to know Jesus Christ personally through our teacher's message to them. We thank you as well for the small group leaders that we have in our church and for the young, the young marrieds, the young, young people who are coming, young uh, adults who are coming to the Soul Food Cafe. We thank you for that. Pray your blessing upon it. And Lord, we ask that you would also bless our staff for Allison, for Valerie, for Bruce, for Layden, uh, as they serve uh, our church in many, many ways. We pray especially for Jaden and the volunteers that work uh, with him among the, the young, uh, young people. Please support them as they face the challenges of working with this age group. We pray that you would bless our elders, our council and the pastoral search committee. We also thank you for all the volunteers who so faithfully serve you here at First Baptist Church. In addition, we ask that you would work in the hearts of those who you wish to see volunteer for leadership positions here at First Baptist Church for the coming year. Heavenly Father, bless each and every one worshiping with us today. We uh, also bless those who cannot be here in person to be part of this service. We think particularly of those who are ill or shut in and those who are caregivers for loved ones. Dear Father, you know and love all, uh, all of them and please support and strengthen them in those tasks. And we pray this morning for uh, uh, Newt J Jorgensen, uh, he's in the hospital, he had a fall yesterday, uh, and um, uh, Britta, his wife, brings that message this morning, and Lord, they are new to our congregation, and we just thank you for all of the new uh, uh, ones that we see in our service, and we pray that you'd be with Newt today. Please bless the offering this morning. We ask that you bless those who are able to give in person and also those who are able to give online or by direct deposit. We, we really thank you for the many ways uh, today that we can return to you a, a portion of what you have blessed us with. We give all the praise and thanks to you, dear Father, and make these requests in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's just quieten our hearts before we 
read our scripture this morning. Father, we ask you to calm our hearts now and help us to leave all our problems and troubles at the door. We may focus on your holy word. We pray, Lord, this morning that we'd have eyes and ears that would be open and hearts that would be open to receive your word this morning. Your word is called the living word. And this morning, God, we ask you to make it come alive for us as Peter comes to share with us this morning and spur us on into action, just not thinking that these are nice words and that Jesus said them, but you will touch our hearts for you and for our community. And we just thank you, God, for your word and ask these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. So this morning our reading is going to be in Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to be looking at um, uh, verses 13 to 21. And it's titled, Jesus Feeds the 5,000. And if you want to follow in the Pew Bible, it's 692, I believe the page number is there. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a um, solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. And when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. As evening approached, the, the, pardon me, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. Give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fishes, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish and he looked up to heaven and he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people and they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate is about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Peter? Are you good there? I think I'm good. Can you hear me? Awesome. Well, Peter, it's a pleasure to have us uh, have you join us here at First Baptist Church this morning, and we're looking forward to the message that God has given you to to spur us on as a community as well. And so, I just want to pray with you. Absolutely, you thank you, Father. We do thank you for this time that we have come together, and uh, you know Peter's heart, Lord. You know his servant's heart that he has, and I just pray, Father, that um, you would just help him to present the message that you've given. Uh, him this morning in a way that would be uh, a blessing not only to you, Lord, but would spur um, our congregation into action in love. And so I just thank you, anoint him with your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. Um, I want to begin by saying thank you for the ministry of First Baptist. Um, It was 30 years ago that I was part of a youth group here, and it was through those years, my teenage years, that my faith was nurtured. And so I want to give thanks to this congregation here um, for helping nurture me in in those formative years. I can say uh, those experiences as a teenager helped make me the man that I am uh, today, and um, so thank you uh, for being part uh, of that. Thank you, too, uh, for your support of Loaves and Fishes uh, Food Bank. Uh, I know that comes in the way of financial support. It also comes in the way of raising food. And then it also comes uh, in the way of time, because I know many of you volunteer with us. So uh, thank you for that commitment uh, to serving our community through the work of Loaves and Fishes Food Bank. Now. I do a fair amount of public speaking, and I also do a fair number of tours 
of the work that we do at Loaves and Fishes. And one of the most common questions that I get is, what's with the name? And it's coming from one of two places. One, it's coming from people who know exactly what the name is all about, and there is a sense of contempt uh, about it. And they're like, you know, can't we just get beyond all this Christian stuff and just get on with serving the community? And then there are others that go, what's with the name? Because it might as well be like broccoli and pizza or spaghetti and meatballs. Like, it just means nothing to them. They have no reference as to why it would be called lobes and fishes. Now, I would imagine that you as Christians and followers of Jesus, when you hear Loaves and Fishes Food Bank, you would go, ah, yes, the story of the loaves and fishes. That's, you know, Jesus was feeding people and the food bank feeds people. Yep, got it. I want to take a step back this morning and go, what's with the name? Like, why is it that we are called Loaves and Fishes Food Bank? What is it that is encapsulated in that name that informs what we do? Now, this story, we read it in Matthew, but this is one of the very few stories about Jesus that appears in all of the Gospels. And in fact, in Matthew, it occurs a second time with the feeding of the 4,000. So this is something that Jesus was regularly doing, And it was something that the writers of the Gospels wanted to make sure that the followers of Jesus understood the importance of this story. And just to underscore that point, at the end of the Gospel of John, it writes that there were many stories written about Jesus, so many that we could never include them, you know, and get them all written down. And yet this story appears in every single Gospel. It's important. It's critical. It helps us understand who Jesus is and how he interacts with this world and how he calls us to interact with this world. Now, there are three points, three things that I want to look at this morning that I think really help us understand what is going on here. And the first is Jesus is the Lord of everything, including the physical. Our tendency as Christians can be to think about our faith in strictly spiritual terms. It is something that exists in my heart, perhaps something that exists in my mind, but it is divorced from the reality of this physical world that we live in. When we take the incarnation seriously, we realize how seriously God takes the physical. That word, incarnation, it quite literally means the fleshing of God. I'm just going to tell you a little side story here. I was in Mexico, and I loved going to these little tiendas where you could get the um, you know, tacos, and they carve the meat off. It, it's called carne asada. And, and I said to someone who spoke Spanish, I'm like, like why, why is it called this? And they're like, well, carne, like meat, like flesh, you know, like the incarnation. This person said that to me, and I was like, what? And it's like, yeah, the fleshing of God. So the incarnation is God taking flesh. God cares about the physical. Now, this is a story that often I've heard people say, oh, yeah, the the parable of the loaves and fishes. In fact, I was interviewed on CBC one time, and they introduced it as the parable of the loaves and fishes. And I was like, (gasps) no, let's not pick that fight on live radio. This is not a parable, okay? This is not a story that Jesus told to make a point. This is the miracle of the loaves and fishes. This is something that Jesus did. 
And from all accounts, he did this multiple times. This is something that Jesus did because he cares about people. Now, this can be something that could be hard for those of us who have never struggled with hunger to hear. We read this story as if Jesus went out and just decided to buy lunch for everyone. You know, you're out having a meal with your friends and you're arguing about who's going to pay for the bill. It's like Jesus says, I, I, I got this one. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not what is going on here. Jesus recognizes people need food to eat. Every single person needs food to eat. Every person here, every single person in the world needs food to eat. Jesus understands this vital point. Look at the Lord's Prayer. What do we pray for? We pray for God's name to be magnified, for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then what's the very next thing? Give us this day our daily bread and then forgive us our sins. Jesus recognizes, he knows that we need food. And so in this miracle, Jesus is making sure that people have food to eat. What does this story say to the young mom who has three kids in an empty cupboard? What does it say to the young man who comes to the food bank for the first time and just tears into a bag of food? It says, Jesus cares. He understands your needs. He understands your immediate needs that you have right now. Jesus feeds people. Now, the second piece that I want to look at here is the humility of Jesus. He does not have to take center stage. Look what happens. The disciples come to him, and they're like, yeah, there's all these people. Send, send them away. Jesus says, say, yeah, you're, you're right. Here, let me, let me get that looked after. He says, no, you guys feed him. Feed them. But look at how the disciples respond. He's like, what? We, 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 we can't feed them. All we have are five loaves and two fish. They're looking at what they don't have. What's Jesus' response? He doesn't belittle them. He doesn't scold them. He says, bring them to me. And I love the telling of this story in John because it's a little boy who brings it, as if to underscore the point that the adults don't get it. The little boy brings the five loaves and the two fish. So we can say, what is it that we have here? We have seven items, five loaves and two fish. But we've done the math wrong. There's actually eight items. There's five loaves, two fish, and one Jesus. But this Jesus does not need to be the center of it. He is not looking for the glory for himself. He is wanting to make sure that people are fed. And so what does he do? Does he go, yep, yeah, there's not enough here. I have no idea what we're going to do about this. He gives thanks. He gives thanks for those seven items, the five loaves, two fish, as he looks out and sees over 5,000 people there and gives thanks for five loaves and two fish. That's crazy. How often do we look out at our life situation and just see what we don't have? Look at what we have, which might be a little, which might be a lot, and give thanks to it, or give thanks for it. 
Loaves and Fishes has gone through incredible expansion over the last few years. And that expansion has required new facilities. And so in 2017, we acquired a 6,000 square foot warehouse. We maintained the small facility that we originally had, and then we got a second building at 6,000 square feet. Now we've got to the point where we're outgrowing that 6,000 square foot warehouse, and we're in the process of designing and building a 25,000 square foot warehouse right beside the post office on East Wellington. And so our staff can look at this and see the future when we're going to have this new building and see the challenges and pinches that we have where we don't have enough right now. We can go, oh, what are we going to do? What do we not have? We don't have enough office space. We don't have, we don't have. And I was like, oh, what are we going to do? We can't. We came back to this. We gave thanks for what we have. And you know what we discovered? As we gave thanks for that original building, which we still have, that was bought by Loaves and Fishes in 1998, that old building that I can't wait to get rid of that was built in 1913. <laughs> it's like, actually, there's quite a bit of office space in here. There's actually quite a bit of meeting space in here. Sure, we want the nice brand new building that we're going to get. But what do we have right now? Let's give thanks for it. There is so much that we can be thankful for. I am thankful for the work of loaves and fishes in our community. I am thankful for the over 200 volunteers who help out every single month to make sure food goes out. I am thankful for the churches of Nanaimo that come together despite theological differences, despite past hurts and arguments and disagreements and whatever, and say, you know what? It matters that people have food to eat. Do you know that eight different churches here in Nanaimo host free food markets every week? There is food available here in Nanaimo seven days a week. Why? Because the churches of Nanaimo came together and said, this matters. We are going to feed our community. Now with Jesus, there is abundance. And this is the third point that I want to make. Five loaves, two fish, turned into an abundance of food for over 5,000 people. And we can look at that and we can say, wow, that was a miracle. Jesus prayed and poof, the food appeared. We don't know where Jesus got that food from. But we do know what he did with it. He gave it to his disciples and they went out into the crowd to distribute it. Jesus could have just made the food appear in each person's hand and they would have had just enough. But he doesn't. He took what he gave thanks for, gave it to the disciples, and they went out. There was such abundance that after everyone got their fill, there was extra that needed to be collected. And this next point, this was something that I just discovered two weeks ago in this passage, and I've like sat in this passage a lot. It's like, Jesus wanted to make sure there was no food wasted. He was running a food recovery program. <laughs> now, I don't know how I missed that. Like, Loaves and Fishes has been running a food recovery program here in Nanaimo since 2012, and it took me till 2023 to see that, like, this wasn't sort of some great idea that we got from the food bank in Kamloops. Like, this was something that Jesus was doing. So for those of you who don't know, and for maybe some of the, you who do know, I just want to go over what food recovery means. What we do is we partner with local grocery stores and provide them with seven-day-a-week pickup of all of the food that they are throwing out. So regardless of quality, we go pick the food up, 
we bring it back to our warehouse, and our volunteers and staff sort that food to its highest and best use. So that means that the good food goes to people, the food that's not so good goes to farm animals, and if we can't get it to farm animals, it goes into compost. The amount of food that we are able to access through this program is absolutely staggering. Last year, we sourced and distributed almost $7 million worth of good food. Prior to running this program in 2011, we sourced and distributed about $800,000 worth of food. Now, we started with one grocery store here in Nanaimo. And we have grown that little by little, but consistently, where we are now doing seven-day-a-week pickup in stores in Ladysmith, throughout Nanaimo, Nanus, and we're even going seven days a week out to Port Alberni to pick up food. On weekends, we're up to Parksville, and on statutory holidays, we're as far north as Courtney. There is lots of food out there, but what is required is the infrastructure to go out and get it. Now, this discovery that there is lots of food out there is something that we as a society have only recently come to realize. This huge amount of food waste has existed in the Western world for probably over 50 years. And it's only recently that we're starting to figure out we should do something about that. People will often say, why does God let this sort of thing happen? Why does God let people go hungry? I think the better question is, where are the disciples? Where are the followers of Jesus? Because God has provided enough food for everyone, not just here in Nanaimo, not just on Vancouver Island, but enough food for everyone in the world to eat. And so where are the disciples who will make sure that that food gets connected to the people who need it? It is clear that God has blessed loaves and fishes. It could be easy for us to look at what God has accomplished and say, yeah, that's enough. But we look out and we see that there's more work to do. There are more people who are hungry. There are more people who could benefit from this abundance that is there. And so we draw encouragement from Paul's words in Colossians. He says, whatever you do, work at it with your whole being for the Lord and not for men. We know that there are people out there that we can serve. And so that is why Loaves and Fishes is expanding beyond Nanaimo. In 2019, we began offering food, a free food market up in Port Hardy. And so every Wednesday, we go to the North Island, either to Port Hardy or Port McNeil. Why? Because we are the disciples of Jesus going out in the community to bring food there. Once a month, we go out to Tassus and Gold River to bring food there. Once a month, we go out to Zabalus to take food food there. There are more places for us to go. There are more communities that need this blessing. And so we are committed to building that infrastructure, to building that human capital, to bring this abundance about. Now, as you can imagine, this enterprise takes a lot of money. And God has richly blessed us. He has ensured that we have had the money we need to not only buy the equipment that we have, but to pay the ongoing operating costs. And one of the fundamental ways that has been done is through our Empties for Food program. Now, if you don't know about this program, you need to know about it. You probably have empties. Well, uh, they're all pop cans. This is a Baptist church, right? So you're all... So, 
your pop cans and your water bottles. We would love to collect them. We have 35 donation bins around town. You drop your empties in there, we collect them, we bring them back to our property on East Wellington, the property where we will be uh, building our new warehouse, and we sort those empties. Do you know how much money that program brought in last year? For $300,000. There's an abundance of empties out there. There on that site, if you drive by it, there's over 300 megabags. So a megabag is like a pallet, four feet by four feet by four feet, filled with empties. There's 300 of them waiting to be squirted. There's abundance out there. So one of the things I say is you're always going to have problems. Are you going to have the problems of scarcity? Or are you going to have the problems of abundance? We've chosen to have the problems of abundance. 300 mega bags of empties. That's a good problem to have. We need volunteers. You want to come out and help us sort those empties? Come on out. We need that. That is a good problem to have. In closing, I want to just give you an example of the problems of abundance. When COVID hit, the world got turned upside down. But guess what happened? There were chickens that kept laying eggs. <laughs> they didn't get the memo that COVID hit, and they kept laying eggs. And where were those eggs supposed to go? They were supposed to go to restaurants. And what happened to the restaurants? They were closed. The chickens didn't care. They kept laying eggs. <laughs> Do you know how many eggs we got? Every week, we got between 6,000 and 9,000 dozen eggs. Every single week. It was absolutely crazy, the abundance. And I can tell you, they were very real problems to deal with. Okay, like it's, it's like it has to be refrigerated, you have to get it out, you have to go through all these pieces. But it's like, Jesus, we will take those problems. And I can tell you other stories. I mean, just, I don't know, it was three months ago, there was 90 pallets of taco chips we got. Why? I don't, I, I don't know. But there's crazy amounts of stuff out there. And we have the infrastructure to handle that. We have the people to get it out. And for that, we give thanks. So let us pray now. God, we give you thanks for the work of Loaves and Fishes and the support of the community to make sure that people here have food to eat. We know that feeding people is near and dear to your heart and that you call us to participate. You call us to bring food to the weak, to bring food to the hungry. Help us to respond to that call, Jesus. May we not see the scarcity, but may we see the rich abundance and the rich blessing that you want to un unload on this world. May we work with you, may we be blessed by you, and may we care for our community well. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, will you stand and sing with us if you want to turn to your hymnal, hymn number 354? If not, the words are on the screen.
just as Jesus' disciples went out into the crowd to make sure people had food to eat. You now go forth, trusting in the abundance of God to bless our community. Go forth to bring food to the hungry, healing to the weak, and hope to those who are struggling. Go now in God's peace. Amen.